GMRS has become a pretty big topic on the channel lately. So today we're going to talk about the Ed Fong single band J-Pole antenna tuned for the GMRS spectrum around 462 to 467 megahertz. I'm going to take a look at it, read all about it, put it together and check it out. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. On this video series, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. But also, we've been doing some GMRS, FRS, and CB radio type stuff. So we're kind of expanding into a more of a two-way radio realm. I do a lot of uh, different things about what is what and the differences between them all. We're not getting away from amateur radio. As I've said in videos past, amateur radio is still top dog, in my opinion. And if you want to know why that is, go check out some of the videos that I'll link up here throughout the course of this video. This is the Ed Fong antenna. Dr. Fong is out of California. I have been using his antennas and selling his antennas, some on my website, for a couple of years now. And a while back, after I put up, uh, I've been doing some updates to my merch shop, shop.hamradio2.com. You can go there to find merchandise to support this show, Ham Radio 2.0, other YouTubers, bunch of stuff. Uh, check out the link in the description below. And after I put up a couple of those other GMRS videos... I had p people asking me about stuff, and I'm like, you know what? Dr. Fong makes a GMRS antenna, so I ordered some, put them on the website. They sold out almost immediately. I kept one for myself, and I was like, I got to do a video on this because I got a couple of GMRS base station radios that I'm going to be reviewing soon, and I'm going to need an antenna to plug them into and do QSOs on. So let's take a look at this today. This is the Ed Fong GMRS antenna. I'm going to switch over to the overhead shot here. All of his antennas come in a bag similar to this. They are made to be put inside of a PVC pipe that they do not come with. The reason they don't come with it is because it's too expensive to ship a PVC pipe along with this other stuff that comes with the antenna. I'm going to zoom out a touch. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> so this is everything that comes in the package. These fit ar around a specific PVC pipe. This goes in the bottom, obviously, which is uh, an SO239. So this whole thing gets strung out inside of the PVC. It's actually not that long because it's, it's tuned for 460 megahertz. So this part right here, if you look right here, he said he had some problems with this in the, in the past with some people. It says right here, for protection only during shipping, remove gently before installation. Okay, so this comes off. Get the, all the tape off of there. It's kind of hard to... He tapes it there, to, you know, again, to protect during shipping. So this comes off. This coil right here is very important. He said he had some customer co contact him one time and admit that they had unraveled the coil, and after they did it, they called Dr. Fong and said, I got the feeling I wasn't supposed to do that, and Dr. Fong's like, no, you're not supposed to do that. The coil stays. This comes off. Okay, so this entire piece right here will go inside of a PVC pipe, and it's a specific PVC pipe that you can buy at most Lowe's and Home Depot or maybe some True Value hardware if you've got those uh, near you. Each antenna is custom-tuned to the frequency you requested. It is therefore important that you use the PVC 3 quarter inch 200 PSI PVC pipe, which says right there. You will need 3 and a half feet of the 3 quarter inch pipe. The, the length of the antenna from here to here uh, depends on how much antenna there is right here so the shorter antennas which this is the whole thing right here if you can see it in the camera obviously it'll be strung out that way but they said three and a half feet the dual band pv the the dual band one that i have is about four foot four and a half maybe uh the 220 that i have is about four foot and the tri-band that i have is actually about five and a half maybe almost six feet because i it's, because it's tri-band so it has to account for 144 megahertz, 220, and 440. This is just 462, and the way that math works is that the higher frequency you get, the smaller wavelength, so this is around 70 centimeters, maybe a little bit smaller than 70 centimeters in wavelength, so a quarter wavelength is not nearly as long as a quarter wavelength in 2 meters, which is one, uh, 144 megahertz, or 6 meters, which is 50 megahertz, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, I explain a lot of that in my ham radio versus GMRS and ham radio versus CB radio videos, which again will be peppered up here throughout this video. 
So this is the entire antenna minus the PVC, which I'm about to put it in right now. I've got a bunch of this uh, PSI 200 PVC because I have four or five other Edfong antennas, and they've all done very well. So we're going to put it in the PVC and uh, take a look and see what it looks like. Following back up after a couple of days with the Edfong GMRS antenna, I got it put into a piece of PVC. The PVC measures three and a half foot long. This end cap right here is the free end cap that comes with the antenna kit that I showed earlier. And this end cap right here is the one with the SO239 on the end of it that uh, has the antenna actually connected to it. So the antenna goes inside the PVC and it comes to about, I don't know, right somewhere in here. And then you just mount this up on your, well, wherever you're going to put up your antenna. And this is important to remember for all Ed Fong antennas because he uses the same type of PVC on all of his antennas, including his GMRS and, and ham radio versions. It needs to be this PR200 PSI. This is the thing you want to look for right here, this, this part. They sell this at Lowe's and Home Depot and probably True Value and places like that where you can buy regular old you know, plumbing supplies or whatever. But something about the thickness of the PVC is how the internal antenna is built so it will be resonant while inside of the PVC. He's told me in the past that the thicker walled PVC is more dense, and since it's thicker, it just doesn't resonate correctly inside of that other type of PVC. So it does need for your, for your SWR and for your impedance to be matched to where it should be. It does need to be in this type of PVC. So I'm going to go put this up in the air, and, and then I'm going to record a couple of other videos that I will link right here operating various radios. I got a couple of mobile radios and maybe a couple of handhelds as well. I'm going to attach to this antenna, and I'll get a picture of it overlay. So I'm going to go put this up in the air right now, and then in the next video, we will show you operation from a GMRS radio on this antenna. Thanks for watching.